Neighbor power belongs to God. I am going to minister to you this morning on a subject that I've entitled Moving in the Power of the Holy Spirit. Moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. Child of God, I want you to have an understanding that in this world, you cannot dismantle the operations of the wicked one without power. The power of God, it is the power of God energizes us to move in the supernatural. Without the power of God, we cannot do anything. I want you to understand as a child of God that God has given us power. God has given us power to dismantle the operations of the wicked one. The Bible says in the same book of in the book of Psalm 62 and verse 11 that God has spoken once and twice we have heard that power belongs to God. Child of God, we do not save a dead God. We save a God who is full of power. We save a God who has got the capacity to transform and to change your life. You need to know that you are full of power. God has gave you power. God has given you power and he wants you to start moving in the power of God. What makes you different from those who are not born again? It is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. You cannot be a witness without power. What makes you to be a witness is when the power of God is available. The there is nothing that can dismantle the power of the Holy Spirit. The other day, a prophet called Micah, in the book of Micah chapter 3 and verse 8, he said that truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. God gives power to men. He has given power to men and he has given to power to us born again believers. You cannot be stranded. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When the powers of the enemy rise against you to dismantle you or to destroy your life, they cannot manage. Why? Because there is something that is backing you and that is the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came into this world, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing those who are oppressed by the devil and God was with him. Anytime when power comes upon a man or when God gives power to a man, he commissions a man to set the captives free. That power which God has given you, it is the power to set the captives free. I want you to understand this, that you are not a commentator, but you are a demonstrator of the spirit. The Bible says in the book of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 that the kingdom of God is not only in words but it is in the demonstration of power. We belong to a kingdom which is full of power. We belong to a kingdom that has got the capacity to exercise power. When Jesus was on earth he helped a lot of people because he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and power. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 that I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation what brings salvation into action is the power of God that backs it up without the power of God salvation cannot be salvation it is salvation because of the power of the Holy Spirit when the power of the Holy Spirit is engaged salvation comes forth when the power of the Holy Spirit is engaged souls are convicted souls cannot be convicted lost souls cannot be convicted without the power of the Holy Spirit in action. When the power is in action, salvation is guaranteed. I want you to understand that you are a child of God and you are an ambassador of Christ. God has bestowed power upon you so that you can set the captives free. The power that he has given you, he wants you to start moving in it and begin to deliver those who are in bondage. And he has anointed you. He has given you his power. He's waiting for you to manifest and to dismantle the operations 
hands of the wicked, uh, he should demonstrate power. In the book of Matthew chapter 9 and verse 8, uh, the Bible says uh, when Jesus had performed the miracle, the multitude marveled uh, and glorified God uh, who had given such great power to men. Uh, the kingdom of God is full of power. The gospel that we preach uh, is not a mere gospel, uh, but it is a gospel that is backed by power. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5, uh, Apostle say for our gospel, uh, which was preached to you, uh, was not only in words. Uh, the gospel which came to you was not only in words, uh, but it was in the demonstration of power and that of the Spirit. I want you to have an understanding. You are not a mere person. When power comes upon a believer, when power is activated in the life of a believer, it turns a believer from an ordinary person to an extraordinary person. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 4 in verse 14 that Jesus came out in the power of the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit and news about him went around. This is what God is expecting. He's expecting on our lives. He wants us to be moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us to be sitting down just, but he wants us to move in the power of the Holy Spirit to liberate those who are in captivity. There are a lot of people who are in bondage and God is counting on us because because we are a chosen generation now. The Lord has anointed us. He wants us to go out and begin to minister to the people and begin to deliver the people from the powers of darkness. He wants us to move as ambassadors to break the yokes of the devil. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27 now that on that day it shall come to pass when his burden will be lifted off from your shoulder and his yoke will be taken off from your neck and it will be broken because of the anointing now. You cannot talk about the anointing without power. You cannot talk about power without the anointing. So God has assigned us to manifest and to liberate people from the powers of darkness. We need to move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Enough is enough. We don't want to play church anymore. We need to see the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to see souls being liberated by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to see souls liberated. But we cannot see souls being liberated without the power of the Holy Spirit. Without us moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 17, in verses 5 to 6, the Bible says, when they did not find the apostles, what did they do? They dragged Jason outside of the house and they took him to the rulers. And they said, these men who have turned the city upside down, who have turned the city upside down, they have come here also. That's what they said. Why? Because of power. When power is activated in you, it causes you to turn the city upside down. That's what happens. It causes you to turn the city upside down. It causes you to dismantle the operations of the wicked one. Some of you in your families, they don't count on you. They don't count on you. But I want to tell you, Jesus, the creator, counts on you. Jesus himself, as long as you are born again, he has bestowed his spirit upon you. And the Bible says, uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, uh, that now the Lord is a spirit. Uh, and where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. You are full of liberty. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit that has been bestowed upon you. God is waiting for you to live the captives of God is waiting for you to dismantle the wicked operations of the devil because it was the assignment of Jesus and it is also your assignment to move in the power of the Holy Spirit the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and this 8 that for this same purpose was the son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of darkness I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit you will move in the power of the Holy Spirit and you will destroy the works of darkness no devil will stop you. You need to understand that Jesus now is in heaven. And in the book of Luke 19, verse 13, the Bible says, Occupy till I come. Do business till I come. Jesus is waiting on us to do business till he comes. He's waiting on us to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not about you, but it's about doing the assignment of Jesus Christ. It's about fulfilling the assignment of Jesus Christ through moving in power. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 33 uh, that with great power the apostles gave witness uh, to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, and great grace was upon them uh, we 
with great power. They moved in power. They gave witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot give witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ without power. It is power that settles the matter. When power is in view, evidence, when evidence for, in form of power is in view, arguments are silenced. Arguments cannot be silenced without the power of God in action. Jesus was different from the Pharisees. The Pharisees knew the Torah. They knew the letters, but they lacked power. But when Jesus came on the scene, he was empowered by the Spirit. He wasn't only ministering. He wasn't only teaching or preaching, but he was demonstrating the power of God. In the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says that what Jesus began both to do and to teach, he did it and he taught it. He expounded the scriptures and also he moved in the scriptures. He manifested the scriptures that he was expounding. It's an error for a child of God to manifest the scriptures or to expound the scriptures without manifesting the scriptures. You need to manifest the scriptures. You need to expound the scriptures. You need to be a woman or a man of substance who will move in the power of the Holy Spirit because God has given you power. He has given you the Holy Spirit and it is the Holy Spirit who created the heavens and the earth. That energy is inside of you. You cannot fail. You can't be defeated. You need to understand the place of power in the things of the spirit. Power. You are not an ordinary person. The other time the Bible tells us of Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 28 going down when they had landed to a city called Malta. The Bible says something that is so much profound. They escaped death. And the natives of that, of that land, the Bible tells us, they, they showed them unusual kindness. That's what the Bible says. And after that, the, it, Paul took a bundle of, uh, of wood and he, he threw it on the fire. And the Bible says, the viper came out of the fire and fastened on his hand. And the native of, those, of that land, they started saying, Aha, uyubuntu azafa. Ayend azafa uyubuntu. But Paul sat down. He didn't mind what people were saying. This is what happens with people who move in the power of the Holy Spirit. When others begin to speak bad about them, they don't get upset because they are so focused to fulfill the assignment of God. When others begin to gossip about them, they don't look at them. They are looking on the assignment because we have got a short time to fulfill the assignment of Jesus Christ. So we focus much on the assignment and not what people are saying. People will always be talking, but as long as you know your calling, as long as you know that you are in in God, uh, you are in Christ, uh, and your life uh, with Christ is hidden in God. Uh, you are untouchable. You focus on the assignment. Uh, Paul focused on the assignment. Uh, when that viper was busy releasing poison uh, in his body, Paul, Paul was focusing on the assignment. Uh, and the Bible says something that is profound. Uh, they waited for him to die. Uh, some people will always wait for you to fail. Uh, but I've got good news for you. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Uh, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says, Take counsel together, but it shall come to nothing. Speak the word, but it shall not stand for God is with us. If God is with us, who can be against us? I want you to have an understanding that God is God. No matter the battles, no matter the battles of life, no matter how the devil wants to frustrate you, he cannot manage because God created you. Our God that we serve is the prophetic God. is the Alpha and the Omega. is the God who ends the end from the beginning uh, and starts the beginning from the end. Uh, so he knows your life. Uh, like Bakateska, he knows your life. Uh, you cannot fail. Uh, the power of the Holy Ghost uh, has been bestowed upon you. Uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of First John chapter 3 and this one uh, that what manner of love uh, has the Father bestowed upon us uh, that we might be called his children. Uh, hey, we are the children of the Most High. Uh, that's the reason why uh, he has given us the access to his name Abba Father. When you are in trouble you call on him, Abba Father. He is the true Father. The Bible says uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8 uh, and verse uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 to 16. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. Why are you fearing to move in the power of the Holy Spirit? Uh, but he has given us the spirit of adoption uh, to whom we cry out, Abba Father. When things are tough, uh, I always cry, Abba Father. When things are Tougher, I will cry to God our Father because he's the one who rescues my soul from the powers of darkness. I feel like preaching. 
<laughs> Sit down. The, the Bible says, now let's go back to the story of Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 28. Now the people were expecting him to die. He didn't die. And when they saw that, the Bible says they changed their mind. They said, this guy is a God. <laughs> this guy is a God. Yes, Apostle Paul was a God. Because the DNA of Jesus Christ was inside of him. The DNA of Jesus Christ is inside of us. That's the reason why I couldn't die. When the poison, I believe, when the poison entered into the blood of Apostle Paul, he found the Holy Ghost. Uh, because the Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so when the poison met the Holy Ghost, uh, it turned into vitamins. Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Kabbalah. <laughs> the power of the Holy Ghost uh, cannot be destroyed by the power of the wicked one. God is the one who created the devil. So the devil cannot destroy God. Uh, and you belong to the side of God. Uh, when God is with you, who can be against you? It's time to move in the power of the Spirit. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says something about Philip. In the book of, in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. Philip ran away from persecution because he was persecuted. And he went into Samaria. Now the Bible says something that is good. When he entered into Samaria, the man was busy running for his life. But he never knew that God was the one who allowed the persecution to occur. So that he can redirect him to minister the gospel to Samaria. Because Samaria by that time needed the gospel. They were given to idol worship because of Simon the sorcerer. Now the Bible says when Philip entered into Samaria in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. He preached Christ to them. And every time when you preach Christ to the people, he confirms the word of his messengers. God backs his word. When you declare his word, he backs it up. You don't even have to struggle. Just speak the word and believe and there will be a fulfillment. That's how God operates. Philip began to minister Christ to them. And the Bible says, signs and wonders began to happen. Unusual miracles were performed by Philip. God performed unusual miracles, you know, using the hands of Philip. And Simon the sorcerer, who had bewitched the city, looked at what was happening. And he said, I want to be born again. <laughs> you have got that capacity by the power of the Holy Ghost, even to convince a witch doctor to become born again. Why? Because of the power that you carry inside of you. In the spiritual world, it's not only about words, but it's about the backing of the spirit. When God said, let there be light, the power of the spirit backed that Wait, uh, and light came forth uh, and now you have got the Holy Spirit the energy inside of you just speak forth uh, and believe that the Holy Spirit will back it don't doubt now how do you move in the supernatural number one you can move in the power of the supernatural or the power of the Holy Spirit by understanding the ministry of prayer by understanding ministry of prayer you can't go far in your spiritual walk with God if you don't understand the ministry of prayer it is prayer that sustains your spiritual life prayer has got the ability to deliver people out of demonic prisons the Bible says something in the book of Acts chapter 16 and verse 20, 25 that at midnight Paul and Silas prayed to God and what happened? God sent forth his move in form of an earthquake and it rebarrated the prisoners out of the prison. The move of the spirit through prayer. The Bible says something in the book of in the book of Acts chapter 12 and verse 5. The Bible says something that is so much profound that now Peter was kept in prison but constant prayers were offered by the church for Peter and what happened? God sent an angel to deliver Peter out of the prison because of prayer. Prayer has got the capacity to cause the move of God. Without prayer you cannot go far. The Bible talks of our Messiah in the book of Matthew chapter 14 and verse 23 going down now the bible says something that is so profound about the messiah that when he had sent the multitude a 
away. When he had sent the multitude away and he sent his disciples, he was left alone. He went to the mountain to pray. Jesus began to pray. When he had prayed, the Bible says the fourth watch came. When the fourth watch came, the boat of the disciples was in the, in the middle of the sea. But Jesus was still praying. The Bible says he started walking on water. What caused Jesus to walk on water? It was the energy that he carried from the mountain, the energy of prayer. It pushed him and he walked on the water. The Bible says he even wanted to overtook the, 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 the boat of the disciples and they cried out that it was a ghost. There is something about prayer. It has got the capacity to, to, to catapult you from a non-entity to a celebrity. There is something about prayer. It has got the capacity to make you, he, you who was irrelevant uh, to become relevant. Uh, you need to understand that impact is not impact uh, until it is felt. Uh, when it is felt, it is called impact. Uh, that's what impact is all about. Uh, when you begin to pray, uh, when you give yourself to prayer, uh, you begin to see signs and wonders happening. Uh, you begin to move in the spirit. Uh, Elijah told King Ahab uh, that go because the rain is coming. Uh, he was busy praying uh, and Ahab started his chariot uh, and he went forth. Uh, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah because he was from praying. The Spirit of God pushed Elijah and he overtook Ahab and he stood on the gate. What brought the Spirit on Elijah? It was the power of prayer. He prayed so much one extent. The Spirit of God transported him from that place where he was praying from to the gate of the king. I want you to understand without prayer you can go far in your spiritual walk. Philip was a man of prayer. The Bible says the angel spoke Talk to him and made him to disappear and he appeared into another place why because of prayer because of prayer because of prayer because of prayer jesus himself said something in the book of matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 he said when you pray not if you pray so prayer is compulsory prayer is compulsory when you pray not if you pray prayer is compulsory it is mandatory for every believer to pray. If you're a believer and you don't know, if you don't pray, it's not a good thing. What is prayer? Prayer is giving God back his word in form of a dialogue. You give God back his word in form of a dialogue. There is a communication. You communicate to God and God also has to communicate to you. That's what prayer is. The Bible says something in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 that pray without ceasing. In the book of in the book of Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says be constant in prayer. In the book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29, the Bible says he always hears, he's far from the wicked, but he always hears the prayers of the what? The righteous. Prayer. Prayer. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are opened to their prayers. Do you know that you cannot stand perfect and complete in the will of God without prayer? Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible talks of Epaphras who prayed so much he was praying for the church. The Bible says he was laboring fervently in prayer so that they might stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Prayer. Prayer. So you can't stand perfect and complete in the will of God without prayer. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 going down. The Bible says of Paul, he said, I do not cease to pray for you. I do not cease to pray for you. So that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him comes as a result of pressing in prayer. The more you press in prayer, the more you spend time in prayer, God begins to reveal himself to you through the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You begin to have the capacity to understand his word. You cannot understand his word without prayer. It's very difficult. In this end time church, we need to pray like never before. Because we are the one that God has bestowed the spirit upon to usher the move of God to the coming of our Messiah. And you need to be part of that. You need to be part of that. You need to be part of that.